clothed me in garments of praise. Jesus forever, my song will be. joy that you bring for the promise that heaven is waiting for me amen this is the reason i sing Well, welcome to Southern Lakes Church. Hey, all, winter's back. Super excited about that, huh? No, no, not so excited. It's okay. It is, it's coming, I promise. It's coming soon. Well, we are so thankful you are here today. Hey, just want to let you know, coming up in just a week, this Friday, we have our Exalt happening. Um, we are so, so excited. What a blessing. What a wonderful night of worship. And hey, if you like ice cream, we're going to be having an ice cream social following this. If you want to come, sing with us, and then eat some ice cream and socialize, we'd love to have you. Hey, also we have um, our Easter services coming up. Before that, we have Good Friday happening on Good Friday, 6.30 p.m. We're going to be live streaming that. We'd love you to be here. Fill the house of the Lord with his people and, uh, and remember the cross together. And then, of course, we have Easter Sunday, an 8.30 service. And then our second service will be live streamed as usual at 10.30. And then following our second service, 
service in person, not online. We're going to be having an egg hunt, although an online egg hunt might be interesting. Um, we're having an egg hunt for our kids, birth through fifth grade, following second service, and you'll get the details that Sunday on that. But hey, invite friends. It's going to be a wonderful uh, time of just fun for the kids and being able to, to enjoy each other. Um, with that, Pastor Ken. Well, good morning, everyone. How was your spring break? Enjoy shoveling snow and doing all that fun stuff. It was great. We're glad you're here today. If you're a guest, I want to say welcome. Thanks for spending some time with us. Hope that you receive a warm welcome, connect with some other people, connect with God, and help us to connect with you by filling out the communication card. You'll find that right in front of you in the pew rack there, uh, the chair rack, and uh, you can drop that in the boxes in the back there after you fill those out, or better yet, take it to the Welcome Center. Um, pass it off there, and we'd uh, like to answer any questions that you have about Southern Lakes Church. So hope you have a great day today. We are looking forward to a great day, a uh, great time together. And we want to start out just by uh, celebrating something, and that is two new members, Tom and Judy Atkinson. They're going to be in the second service, so if you see them uh, somehow later today, uh, tell them congratulations. But can we just celebrate the fact that Tom and Judy are new members? Amen. That's good, and if you want to become a member, uh, want to look into that a little bit more, our 101 class, part of the Discover series, is what you want to take. That'll answer all the questions for you there, and our next 101 is coming up on May 1st. You can register for that online. So 101 is on May 1st. Uh, 201 is not the following Sunday because that's Mother's Day, but the Sunday after that, May 15th, and then 301 is May 22nd. So that's coming up in May. We're going to go through the entire Discover series again. Some of you, about 80 of you, still need to pick up uh, either 201 and 301. And I don't know how many of you still need to pick up all of them together. But please, uh, jump in there if you can in May. And we hope that you're part of the Discover series for that. I want to put in, uh, this is a little extra note that we hadn't, didn't have planned. But I heard about uh, a special for the Weekend to Remember. Uh, the next Weekend to Remember opportunity is coming up uh, the 22nd through the 24th, so it's just two and a half weeks out now. But this is a great opportunity to just uh, get away for a weekend with your, your spouse and just uh, enjoy some time together and a little bit of a, a, a tooling for your marriage to, to spruce things up a bit, uh, to work on things that you, we all need to work on. But there's a special going on right now, right? Uh, normally it's $350 a couple. If you do the, um, the code that's on our, our website and so forth for Southern Lakes Church, you can get it for $250. But if you register by tomorrow, they got a super bottom line special going. You can get it for $200, uh, less than 100 each person. So let me encourage you to do that. I don't know if money was the reason that you weren't planning on attending, but let me just put another plug in there and say, listen, Come on out. This one's in Madison. The mask mandate is no more. It's going to be a great weekend. I hope you can be part of that coming up. One last thing before we pray, and that is welcome back. Some of you out there, look for the bleary-eyed people uh, that are back from Honduras. Uh, they came back on the red-eye flight last night. And uh, I see a couple of you here this morning, so kudos to you. First service even. That's amazing. So if you see any of them that were uh, part of the Honduras missions team, they had a fantastic week. We're looking forward to hearing more about that. We're going to give them a chance to recover and put some pictures together and things, and uh, we'll hear more about uh, their week next Sunday. Uh, but if you haven't uh, done so already, you can go online uh, on our Facebook page and look at a lot of the pictures and the daily updates and the things that have happened. They got a ton of work done down there, and I know they're a huge blessing and received a huge blessing in all of that as well. Let me just remind you that your giving makes all of these things possible. Your generosity, uh, God's goodness working through each of us. So please continue to be faithful and God will use our collective purpose to do greater things uh, for him and his kingdom. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for what you're doing in our midst, in our church, through our church. Thank you for the safe return of our team from Honduras. Uh, I pray that you'd help them all to recover quickly as uh, they have things to do, places to go, people to see. Help us as a church, Father, as we continue to go forward to proclaim the good news of the gospel. As we go into this Easter season, Lord, open our hearts to what you have for us. Even now, even in this service, Lord, help us to be open to you. We ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stand? Our God is worthy of a thousand hallelujahs, a thousand praises. Today we're going to introduce a new song. I just ask that you would uh, listen, but you would sing along as you learn it with us. 
a thousand hallelujahs.
Psalm 23 he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. They rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, with everything that is happening in the world, sometimes it's easy to forget God's in control. He is the shepherd giving his sheep what they need. Not what they want, but what they need. Not because we deserve it, because we don't. But because of who he is, for his name's sake. Even when things are hard and we're surrounded by enemies, he is there to give us what we need. He has made us co-heirs with Jesus anointing us as kings, giving us more than we deserve so that our cup runneth over, so that we can dwell in his house forever. So I ask you to close your eyes, and I want you to identify your struggles, identify your temptations, identify where there is a separation between you and God and I want you to give that over to him. Give him the control of your struggles.
Jesus, that you are on the throne. No matter what temptation we face, no matter what fear that is in our hearts, no matter what worry, anxious thought that holds us, we know that you have conquered the greatest of fears, the greatest of deaths, the things that will eternally separate us from a holy God. It's gone. And all we have is you, our Savior, our King our Lord, to praise and to worship and to remember that you, you've got us. We're yours. I pray that you would remind us of that daily and that we would set our hearts on truth. That we'd allow your word and your voice to be the strongest in our lives. We look to you and serve you and you alone, for you are worthy. It's in your name, Jesus, your people pray. Amen. You may have a seat. Don't eat your M&Ms until mommy comes back, okay? I'll be right back, but you don't eat them until I'm done. Okay? Don't touch them. I won't. I'll be right back.
Mommy. Wait till Mommy comes back, okay? <laughs> Don't eat them till Mommy comes back. Mommy be right back. Don't eat them yet. Don't eat them yet, okay? Don't eat them. Don't eat this baby. My baby can't eat candy. Honey, let's wait for mommy. Don't touch my hand, man. There's more M&Ms where they came from, <laughs> just to tempt you up there a little bit. How many of you, uh, you, you came through last week's uh, candy challenge, or should I say temptation challenge, okay, you know, um, kind of tough on those kids that way, and uh, hopefully most of you fared better than most of them uh, in the candy challenge for sure. Well, temptation is real. We've been learning about it uh, from the book of James, and uh, we're going to continue along those lines today. But you know, if you think about it, our world is filled with temptation. Small temptations, great temptations. And you can trace a lot of the problems we have in this world back to that temptation uh, phase. And if you think about even the war going on in Ukraine right now, <clears throat> at some point there was uh, a temptation, or many temptations, right? Lines that were crossed and continued in that direction. Uh, you can think about something, maybe a war in our own backyards that's a little closer in Milwaukee. The murder rate, again, this year is skyrocketing, and uh, year over year, greater than the last several years, uh, already over 50 people, 50 homicides, uh, a triple murder just this past week, um, things like that going on. Uh, in our neck of the woods as well. Or maybe you heard the slap that was heard around the world, you know, this past week. 
And if you trace all these things back, what you're going to find is there is a moment of temptation where somebody can say yes to sin or they can say no and they can walk away from it. But we're surrounded by it. Uh, the M&Ms up here are just a reminder of that, that uh, we are surrounded by temptations and, and uh, every day we are challenged to do the right thing. So I don't know about you, but I'm thankful that God hasn't just kind of left us on our own, but he's given us instruction. So let me invite you to take God's word today. Turn with me to the book of James. Uh, James chapter 1, we've been uh, studying about temptation, what exactly it is. We're going to review in a moment, but what exactly it is, how it works. And then uh, today, specifically, we want to talk more about how to overcome that temptation in our lives. Follow along as I read. Uh, I'll begin uh, reading in verse number 12 down through 18, James chapter 1. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be kind of a first fruits of his creatures. God wants us to have victory. Uh, James tells us to be not deceived. We have to understand about temptation and how it works. So if you didn't catch any of this online, um, I didn't catch it last week or online, go back. It's all there. Uh, go back and review last week's message. But let's just review real quickly. When it comes to temptation, what is it? It is a solicitation to do evil or that invitation to sin. Uh, the interesting thing about temptation is it, it kind of calls out to us. We don't even have to go looking for it. It comes looking for us, and it, it calls out to us and says, come and get me. That's what temptation is all about. But as James made very clear, uh, God is not the author of temptation. He's not the source of temptation. God is holy. He's above all of that. Uh, he doesn't want to trip us up. He wants us to have victory in our lives. And so God is not the author of temptation. Where do the temptations actually come from? They come from our own desires, and then we get enticed and drawn away by those desires. And as we talked about last week, those desires can be good or they can be bad. They many times start out as good desires, but then they go rogue, they go bad. For instance, we all need sleep, but if you, uh, you give into too much sleep, you can become lazy or slothful, and that's a bad thing. We all need to eat food, uh, but that food can come, become a bad thing if we overdo it and, and those kinds of things. Sex is a wonderful gift from God, uh, but outside the confines of one man, one woman for life, marriage, uh, it's a bad thing, and there are consequences that come from all of that. So it's our own desires, not God. It's not the devil made me do it, but the temptation is our own desires that come, and we give in to those desires, and that's when it becomes a problem. Uh, we talked also about how it works. So when you think about temptation, we, we, we said, let's think about it in three stages. And the first stage um, we, we talked about last week was the invitation. That's that, that enticement to sin, that invitation that says, come and get me. And that worm may not look very good to us, but to a bass, ooh, baby, you know, that's good stuff. And, and they want that worm. And, and we do the same thing with many temptations in our lives. Oh, that looks so good. I, I just think I've got to have that. And, and, and we're drawn to it. That's the temptation phase invitation. If we give into it then, that moves on to stage number two, which is the sin stage. And uh, immediately, the Bible says, some consequences start coming into the fold. We've been caught in our sin. We've been trapped, if you would. And that kicks into a whole bunch of uh, uh, consequences, which is the third phase right there. And for the fish, you know, he becomes the fish fry on Friday night. 
But for us, when we give in to temptation, there's some other things that we might get fried or bad consequences that happen. Uh, and as we've said, with sin, it'll, it'll take us farther than we want to go, it'll keep us longer than we want to stay, and cost us more than we want to pay. Those are the consequences of temptation if we don't say no. Now let me ask you, does God want you to fail in your temptations? He does not. God wants us to be victorious. He wants us to be able to say no to temptation and yes to him, yes to the good things in our lives. And so that's what today's message is about. We're going to talk about four ways specifically. Now, there's lots of different strategies you can have to, to say no to temptation, but here's four ways that I want you to consider today to overcome temptation in your life. And the very first one, we actually gave you a sneak preview of last week, and that was this. Remember the goodness of God. Remember God's goodness to you. He's a good God. Uh, here in verses 17 and 18, it talks about that. Verse 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. God gives us every perfect gift. And, and I like what Josh had to say in, in our worship moment a little while ago. It's like, God doesn't give us everything we want, but he gives us everything we need. And one of Satan's tricks is to try to outsmart us. And the way he does that many times is he, he tries to convince us that God is holding out on us. That's what he did in the garden with Eve. And even though they could have everything else, it's like, oh, God's holding out, at you, holding out on you this one tree. And he convinced her uh, to partake. And that's what God will do many times. It's like, really? God doesn't want you to have that? You know, if it looks so good, it feels so good, it's and Satan tries to, to, to nab us that way, but we have to remember that every good and every perfect gift comes from God. He's given us all that we need. And we don't need to be tempted by other things that way. Uh, this past week, I heard about a pastor in uh, Atlanta area, and uh, he gave in to temptation, and what he did is he, he filed a fraudulent uh, loan claim for, uh, during the pandemic, and uh, he got $150,000 uh, through that. And he went out and bought himself a nice luxury uh, Mercedes Benz. You know, he just had to have that car. Now, I would love to have a car like that. But the fact of the matter is the reason I don't have one is because I don't need one. And God hasn't provided that for me. And, he, and, and I don't believe God's holding out on me because of that either. I didn't walk here today. I went from point A to point B, and God always takes care of that. He supplies what we need. So we don't have to be tempted by what we don't have, but many times we are. It's like, well, I just got to have that, or I just need this, and God's holding out on me. No, he isn't. God gives perfect gifts. It, it, it says they come down from the Father of lights. That, that term Father of lights is a Jewish um, title for God as creator of all light, um, the star, the sun, the moon, all the light. He is a creator of all of that, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. You see, with God, he never changes. The sundial, uh, it changes constantly, but God's not like that. He's faithful, and he's there for you. And so you and I need to remember the goodness of God. We need to remember how God has blessed us in all that he has given us. And if we'll do that, that's a great deterrent to sin. It's a great deterrent to giving into temptation. Lamentations uh, chapter 3 and verse 24 says this, the Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I have hope in him. The Lord is my portion. Uh, when we understand the love and the goodness of God, we realize that he is all we need. He is my portion. And where we run into problems is when we don't understand that, when we don't stop and contemplate God being your portion. And, and what happens, it's kind of like there's a void within us, a big empty hole. Uh, when, our, when our relationship is not right with God and we're not uh, fervently seeking him and in a right relationship with him and at peace with God, it, it's like we have this empty hole within and we go to seek to fill that hole with other things, money, sex, power, whatever those things are. It's like, I just need something else to complete me. I need something else to satisfy me. I need something else to fill this 
void within. But listen to me. When you have a vital relationship with Jesus and you're walking with him and it is well with your soul like we just sung, you're not going to be tempted by all those things because there's not going to be a void. He's your all. And, and so when you're coming up against temptation, and we all do, you just got to stop and remember the goodness of God. Remember all that God has done for you. Remember his goodness and his grace and his forgiveness and his love and his faithfulness. Remember where you were when he found you, when you came to Jesus and how he forgave you and gave you a new life and all that he's done. And if you'll just stop and do that, you'll become thankful. You'll become grateful. You'll be satisfied in him. He will be your portion. Verse 18 reminds us of the greatest gift of all. God is a great giver of gifts, but the greatest gift of all is eternal life. And God has given you and I eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ. And that's part of the goodness of God. So we always go back to the gospel and say, thank you, God, for what you have done for me. Do you have a relationship with him today? I don't know who I'm speaking to, who's watching online, but if you've never received the Lord Jesus into your life, that's why he died on the cross. He died in your place so that you could be forgiven of your sins and you could have a brand new life in him. That void that you're trying to fill with all these other temptations and things and why you're tripping up and falling headlong into those, it's because you're not satisfied in the Lord. You were never meant to do life alone. You were meant to do it with God as your all in all. So if you've never received him, receive him today. He'll help you with that temptation. Uh, he will fill you and give you his power. If you're already a believer today, remember. Stop. Remember. The goodness of God. Has he been faithful to you? Absolutely. He'll continue to be faithful to you, and that'll be a great deterrent to sin. It'll be a great deterrent when it comes to temptation. So that's the first one, probably the most important without a doubt. The second one is close to it in the sense that verse 18, it says, he brought us forth by the word of truth. The word of truth. The next way to overcome temptation is to renew your mind, and specifically with the word of truth. Uh, Romans uh, chapter 12 and verse number 2 talks about the fact that we need to not be conformed to this world, but transformed. The world wants to put, in, put us into its mold. The world wants us to follow error and, and fallacy, but we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may prove what is a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Now, there are many ways to transform our minds, but I think two of the greatest ways to do that is to read the Word of God and to memorize the Word of God, the Word of truth. And here's why. When does the battle really begin? When you think about the areas of temptation that you struggle with, and we all have them, uh, when does the battle really begin? Well, you, you might think it's right in that moment where you're like, oh, you're, you're tempted to reach out and, and grab that thing or do that thing or, or whatever. No, actually, it starts long before that. Can you imagine somebody going to war and not being prepared when they get there on the front lines of the battle, they're going to be a sitting duck. And it's the same way with you and I. If we're not prepared when we are face-to-face -face in that battle with the enemy, with temptation, we're going to lose if we're not prepared. And so here's what happens. If we renew our minds with the word of God, it prepares us for that battle. It gives us ammunition that we need. So let's talk about that first one, the Word of God. We need to be reading God's Word every single day. It should be a non-negotiable in our lives. Uh, every day as we read the Word of God, we're going to be reminded and equipped with many different truths and encouragement, like Romans chapter 6. You're going to be just reading, and all of a sudden you're going to come across this, and, and it says, Reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but grace. And so you're reminded as you're reading the word of God, man, I am dead to sin. Sin has no power over me. I don't have to say yes to temptations. And, and you just, as you read the word of God, you're reading things like that. You're going to read things like Hebrews uh, chapter 4, 
in verses 15 and 16, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. And so you're going to be like, wow, Jesus was tempted just like I was. But he didn't sin. He always took the way of escape. God helped me to do that. We can go to him. We can go to that mercy seat and find grace in our time of need. I don't know about you, but I need that every single day. I need to be in God's word, to to be encouraged and to be fortified and strengthened and to learn and grow and be stretched. We all need that. Think about what Jesus did. And we want to be like him, right? Right? Uh, When he was tempted, and you can go back and review this, Matthew chapter uh, 4, verses 1 through 11, the temptation of Christ. When, When Satan came and tempted Jesus in the wilderness, how did Jesus combat that? How did Jesus have victory in the midst of that? I'll tell you what he did. He combated Satan's lies with God's truth. He said, it is written, it is written, it is written. And by the way, he didn't have his little, you know, his little handheld device where he could look it up and Google it or whatever. Uh, He had the word of God on his lips and in his heart because he knew the word of God. And that's what we need to do. We need to combat Satan's lies as he comes and he tries to tempt us with things. We can say, no, Satan, I don't need that. Uh, I, I am dead to sin. I, I have the, all the power of the universe available because of the resurrection power of Jesus. Whatever it is to bear in that moment, you're going to have truth to combat the lies. It is written. It is written. It is written. But you're not going to know unless you read the Word of God. So let me ask you today, how well do you know the Bible? Now, if you've been reading the Bible for years and reading through the Bible for years, you, you probably know a good bit. You've heard a lot of sermons. You've, you know, that's great. And that's what we should do. We should all be kind of working our way through the Word of God every single day. But how well do you know the Word? Because Satan's going to come along and he's going to tempt you in some areas. I'll, I'll just quiz you in a couple of quick areas. Divorce. Uh, many people today are tempted to go for divorce. It's like, well, I. I kind of fell out of love. I don't really love her anymore. I don't really love him anymore. I I found my soulmate, and it's not him. It's not her. Uh, God just wants me to be happy. So obviously, he doesn't want me to be in this miserable marriage, even though it's probably mostly my fault, and I'm not willing to admit it. You know, all these kinds of things, we buy into these lies, and the temptation is just like, you know, I'm going to take the easy way out because, you know, it's too hard. But what does God say? God says he hates divorce. Did you know that? Where does God say that he hates divorce? Well, I know it's in there someplace, right? But specifically, where does God say it? Malachi, chapter 2, verse 16. God hates divorce. So if you're having that conversation with somebody else or you're tempted yourself, you can go to that and say, God hates divorce. He wants me to work this out. Divorce shouldn't even be part of my vocabulary if I'm a Christian because I'm going to work this out. And there's nothing that I can't do with God's help. That's important to combat those lies. Satan, it is written. It is written. How about worry? I know we're all tempted to worry or be anxious about things. It's the opposite of trusting God, right? Real easy to do. But what does God say? God says it does no good. But where does he say that? (laughs) It's in there somewhere, I know, right? Go ask the pastor. No, you need to know. One of those places is Matthew chapter 6, Sermon on the Mount. And there's a whole passage in there that that God talks about taking care of us. But verse 25 of of chapter uh, 6 tells us that worry does no good. (laughs) It's worthless. And so you may need to go back there and... and, uh, Just remember that when you're prone to worry. How about getting angry? Yeah, we're tempted to get angry or or, or to get upset about things and and, and to solve the problem your way or whatever the case. What What does God say about that? It is written that the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Where does the Bible say that? 
James. We're coming to it right after Easter. James chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. My point is this. Do you know what God has said? Do you know truth? The more you read the word, the more you're going to know truth, and the more you're going to be able to spot error, and you're going to be able to combat that error with the truth of God's word. But you got to be in God's word every day. So here's my challenge to you, okay? Every day, have a God time. Set aside some time in the morning, at night. Maybe it's on your commute. You're going to pop the earbuds in. You're going to listen to the word of God. Uh, You're going to maybe do it on your break. But you're going to have a time where you're going to be reading the word of God of God, so that you're going to be able to say, it is written. Satan comes along with that temptation, and you say, oh, not today, buddy, because it is written. I'm not going down there. Uh, I, I know the lie. Then the second area is memorization. It's kind of like taking the reading to the next level, where you're taking what you've, you've read, and now you're memorizing. Now you really know where it is in the Word. You know the address of it, but you've internalized it. You've memorized it. That's how you transform or renew your mind. Uh, Memorizing helps us to get out of the old patterns of thinking. Uh, Memorizing helps us uh, to have thoughts ready at hand, to be prepared when the battle comes. So you can combat what Satan's trying to do right there. Now, early on in my Christian life, I'm so thankful for this. I was challenged to memorize Scripture. And I never did that as a kid. I didn't know that was a thing. But I'll tell you this. I did memorize scripture, but it wasn't because I wanted to. And I didn't do it because it was easy. And I didn't do it because somebody else told me to do it. You know the reason I did it? Out of necessity. I had to do it if I was going to have victory. Because I had old patterns of thinking and I had all kinds of lies embedded in my brain and things that I had believed for years. And I had to learn to think God's thoughts after him. And there were areas of temptation that I had to, had to specifically target with Bible memory to give me victory. Areas like pride. <laughs> and I'm still working on, on these areas. But, but like pride. And, and so I memorized uh, from James. James chapter 4 and verse 6. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble, and many other verses on pride. Lust. Uh, I'm a red-blooded human male, and I had lust and still have lust that you have to deal with. And the only way out of some of those those holes and those, those ruts is to learn to think differently. And learn to have your mind set on things. And so I memorized lots of scripture on this one. I memorized all of Proverbs chapter 5. And uh, and why? Because I needed to. And I still do. And I have to review that. But Proverbs 5 is one of those places you can go. For the lips of an immoral woman drip honey. And her mouth is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as wormwood. Sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lay hold of hell. And on and on it goes, right? That's the immoral woman. And and that's the reminder. So you're in that lust, you're in that situation, and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit brings back the word of God that you have memorized, and you can say, no. Warning, warning, don't go there. Oh, it might seem so beautiful. It, It might seem like lips of honey and beauty, but in the end, she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. And if you look at the rest of that, that proverb and Proverbs 6 and Proverbs 7 that go with it, you're going to see, man, this is a deep ditch. You don't want to go there. You see what I'm talking about here? You, you have to memorize Scripture to renew your thinking. Uh, alcohol is another one for me. I struggled with alcohol uh, abuse in my life. My father was an alcoholic. And, and so I memorized verses on that, like Ephesians 5 and verse 18. Do not be drunk with wine where it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And, and for me, I, I had to be very careful. There were times I couldn't even go to the bar because I was tempted. There, there were people that were old friends of my life. Come on, let's go do this. Let's just have a few. Let's do this, you know. And even so-called Christians, well-meaning Christians, all like, we can drink, we can, you know, and, and they'd suck me back in. And I had to learn new patterns of thinking and say, no, 
No, I, I don't want to cross that line because I make bad decisions and bad things always happen. There's consequences there. I only want to be filled with the Spirit, not with any other substance, alcohol, drugs, whatever. Now, I'm, I'm just bearing a little bit of me to you today because I'm no different than you are. I'm a person in process. God's not done with me yet, praise the Lord. And I have to keep renewing my mind just like you do, so I can have victory in my life. What's going to help me look past the cheese, the bait, and see the trap? And I know I'm speaking to a lot of cheese heads here today, so we got to learn to, we got to learn to look past the cheese. Oh, it's so good. It's so scrumptious. It's mm, just what I need. Is it? As you renew your mind, with the Word of God and memorize the Word of God, that's going to help you to see the consequences and to not go there, to say no. So here's my challenge on this one, okay? You can do this. Memorize a verse of Scripture this week. And memorize something that specifically you're, you're struggling with. If, if your temptation is M&Ms, there's nothing in the Bible that says don't eat M&Ms, but there might be something in the Bible that will help you not to go there, okay? To have self-control, and memorize something specifically to help you in the battle. So when Satan comes along and that temptation comes along, you can say, it is written. And again, some of you haven't done this because you haven't wanted to. It's too hard. You tried it. You got away from it. But let me just tell you, you need to do it out of necessity. If you really want victory and you want it bad enough, get in the word. The word of truth. Now, I've taken a lot of time on these, these first two because they form the foundation and everything else. And my time's just about gone, so I'm going to go through the last two very quickly here. But these first two are so vital to remember the goodness of God. Remember what God has done, what he's doing in your life. Look to God. And then get in God's word. Spend time reading it, memorizing it, just renewing your mind. Here's number three, though. Very quickly, put on the whole armor of God. Again, the battle starts long before you get to that temptation phase. So you put on the whole armor of God. And I don't have time this morning, but let me invite you to go back there to Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18, and read about the armor of God, each piece of the armor. And to put on the armor. Each day we need to do that. And how do we do that? How do you put on the armor of God? You do it by faith. You do it by faith. It's not physical pieces that you pull out of the closet and put that, you know, that, that shield on and, and you know, buckle up your bootstraps. No. By faith, every day you surrender to him. By faith, you put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. That's what it says in Romans. Uh, we need to put on the Lord Jesus. Romans chapter, um, let me get the verse right here, 13 verse 14. And so there's God's part in this where we surrender to him and we give it to God. We give him our temptation. We give him our struggle. We ask for his help. We surrender it to him. But then we also have to put feet to our prayers. There's our part. And not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Not make any provision, any opportunity fulfill the lust of the flesh. So we, we got to trust God's going to do his part, but then we've got to do our part in the process as well. Like we need to make good choices. Uh, that's what it's about a lot of times is we just got to make some good choices. And then we got to set ourselves up for success rather than failure, right? I mean, if you got a problem with eating, uh, you got some like eating disorder or you eat too much or whatever, don't schedule your lunch appointment for, you know, the old country buffet or, you know, pizza ranch or someplace like that. You know, uh, you're going you're gonna to stumble. You're, you're going to have problems, uh, if you've got problems with your internet and, and things going on there, uh, get some accountability. Get some filters. Set yourself up for success. Like I said, for me, I couldn't go to the bar for a long time because I would have been tempted to drink and party and get drunk and do things I didn't want to do, that God didn't want me to do. So you've got to be smart enough. You've got to learn. Here's another one. You've got to learn from your past failures and continue to improve and grow. Okay, Satan, you got me last time, but mm, not this time. 
and, and you get better and smarter in all those things. Get accountability. That's one of the things that's so important. You might need somebody else just to hold you accountable or just let somebody else know what's going on in your life, in your small group. Get some accountability. Pray for one another. And that goes along with this last one here, and that is if you need to, don't be afraid to reach out for help. Some of the temptations I'm talking about today, some of you, I don't know where you're at. If you don't get some help and, and there's not an intervention, so to speak, you're going to go downhill. You're going you're gonna to be, you're going to be toast. You might need to reach out for some help. If you keep hitting that wall and not successful, you can't do it on your own, it's okay. It's okay to see a counselor. It's okay to get some help and enlist some other people to help you in the process and to help set up some barriers and to change your life. Do you want victory? That's the question. So it's all about putting on uh, the whole armor of God. And I love verse number 18 because it highlights the importance of prayer. Prayer is so important in this process. Praying always is what the word says there. Uh, that's what Jesus taught us to do when he taught us to pray. Matthew 6 and verse 13, part of the Lord's Prayer. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil or the evil one. God doesn't lead us into temptation. He wants to lead us out of that temptation. And so prayer is a big, big part of that. And if you're struggling and you keep hitting that wall, let me invite you to pray. Fast and pray. Seek him. Enlist the people in your small group to pray for you that you can have victory in your life. Put on the whole armor of God. Set yourself up for success rather than failure. One more, and I'm going to hit it quickly because it's kind of a repeat. And that is, take the way of escape. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. And by the way, this is a great verse to memorize. If you're like, what verse am I going to memorize? I'll tell you, it's a hard verse to memorize, but it's worth it. And this is one you want to have in your arsenal. Because there's no temptation that has overtaken you except such as is common to man, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. God will make the way of escape. You just have to take it. It's always there. What's very interesting about that verse is it says, you know, no temptation is taking you except such as common to man. We all face temptations. Now, this isn't one of those sermons you can say, well, this applies to somebody else. No, it applies to you. It applies to me. We all struggle with temptation. And then the next part of the verse, I love it. It says, but God. But God is faithful. He'll not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. You see, God is always making the way of escape that you may be able to bear. There's always a way out. There's always a way out. We just have to look for it. We have to look for that opportunity and take it. There's always a way out. You don't have to quit. You don't have to gossip. You don't have to get angry. You don't have to treat other people the way you do. You don't have to swear. You don't have to stretch the truth. You don't have to do any of those things. There's always a way out. By the grace of God, we just have to look for it. There's always a way of escape. Here's, here's some things just real quickly I'm going to give you. Uh, pray instead of plunging. Pray instead of plunging into that sin. That's a way out. Look away instead of lingering. Uh, it's too easy to look in lust or whatever it is. You, you covet things. Uh, don't linger there. Look away. Redirect your thoughts instead of continuing down a bad road. Uh, turn that channel, so to speak. Remember your identity in Christ instead of buying into Satan's lies. Remember who you are. You're a child of God. If you know Jesus as your Savior, you have all the power of the universe, of the resurrected Jesus at your disposal to fight and win this battle. You can do it. You don't have to say yes to sin. You can say no. But in order to do that, in every temptation, every temptation, there's a way of escape, and you just need to take it. Take the escape route, and you'll have victory, right? So very quickly today, uh, God is working. We all face temptations. Some of them are small. Some of them are bigger. We've faced temptations many times a day. And if we're going to be victorious, here's part of the victory uh, slogan, if you would. Remember the goodness of God. Renew your mind 
put on the whole armor of God every single day and then take that way of escape. If you'll do that, you will have victory by the grace of God. That's the way. That's the way. We have to want it. We have to step into it. The trap is real. The consequences are real, real, but the way out is always there. We need to take it. So what's your next step today? Maybe you need to memorize this week. Maybe you need to you know, spend some time in the Word. Uh, maybe you need to get some help. Maybe you need to pray. I, I don't know what it is. But just focus on one thing, and God will help you. And I want to uh, just cap it off with uh, some verses out of James again, going back to James chapter 4 that I quoted from earlier. He, that is God, gives more grace. He'll give you the grace, my friend. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God. Submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. That's the answer. Submit to God. Draw near to him, and he's going to draw near to you. Resist Satan, resist the temptation, and look to God, and you'll have victory. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you would help each of us in our lives to give you the glory, to look to you when we need you the most in our moment, in our hour of temptation. Help us to remember your goodness, all that you've done for us, all that you're doing for us. We praise you for it. Help us to be in your word, fortifying ourselves, having truth so we can say it is written and combat the errors in our lives and combat the temptations that are there. Help us daily, Lord, to be putting on the whole armor of God by faith, but also as we put on the Lord Jesus Christ to make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. Help us, Father, to be actively seeking to say yes to you and no to temptation, always taking the way of escape that we may have victory and glorify you more. Father, we love you. We thank you. I pray for all of those today that are really struggling, that they would take this to heart and have victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. We're going to close out a little bit different today, um, and that's because I have a wonderful announcement that I'm very excited to make. And so let me invite um, our three staff members up here, because this is a staff announcement that I want to talk about just briefly. So, you know we've been looking for a new children's director uh, for the past uh, month or so, and God has wonderfully answered that prayer. And so I'm very excited today uh, to let you all know that uh, God has done something great. Well, maybe I'll tell you next week. How's that sound? No. <laughs> I'm very excited because I've seen the hand of God in all of this, and uh, I've seen God working behind the scenes and I'm just so grateful for all of that. And so I'm pleased to announce today that our new children's director is Carrie Gage. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> Carrie is so wonderfully equipped for this. Uh, she has wisdom, she has experience, she's been involved. She's been part of this church for a long time. Uh, this whole thing kind of went first full circle. I kind of gave her a hard time about this because she was on the search team that interviewed me before I came. And then I got to interview her uh, before this position. So I got to ask her some of those hard questions back. But uh, Carrie is so gifted, and she is going to be able to step into this role and do just a wonderful, wonderful job. Uh, she's already actually transitioning out. She has another job that's going to be finishing up in uh, June, so she'll be fully in the saddle at the end of June. It's a part-time position of about 25 hours a week, and in the meantime, she's going to be kind of gradually moving in five to 10 hours a week, just getting her feet wet, doing what she can in the meantime. So we're very happy about what God has done there. And then there's more. There is more. Uh, God has also worked out sort of a, a staff restructuring that has enabled us to do some things that we weren't even think thinking were possible before that. And, and so Josiah has been 50-50 worship and uh, student ministry. And what we are going to do now is we're going to move him out of the student ministry into a family pastor role. So he is our new 
family pastor. Praise God for that. So he's going to have an umbrella role over birth through high school and beyond and give us a lot more continuity and work with families there. Uh, and that's been an amazing thing because uh, him and I have been talking about this for over a year or so, and he's had a desire. God's put in his heart to work more with adults and do some more teaching and work with families. And he just hasn't had the bandwidth with everything else that he was doing. And so now God has worked that out for him to step into this role. And uh, we're just really passionate about our youth and our families here, and this is really going to help us in that regard as well. So what does that do? It leaves the student ministry director position open, But God went before us in all of that as well, and so I'm pleased to announce our new student ministry director, who is J.D. Swedberg. (laughs) And again, just God's hand all over this. J.D. has been part of this church. How long have you been part of this church? Yeah, you were born in that nursery down there or something like that. (laughs) I don't know. But uh, he's been here forever and just a faithful young man and a man of God. And he's been training. I don't know how many of you knew this, but he's been going to school to become a youth pastor. And he graduates a year from this May. And I was already getting concerned about that. It's like, man, we got a free agent out here. He's been part-time uh, working with our tech, but, but that's it. He's been working another job. And I'm like, how can we lock him up? But we didn't have any thing to really offer him, and I was getting concerned that he was going to have to walk and get a real job someplace, and, uh, and God worked it out. Wonderfully, he's been Josiah's right-hand man in student ministries and doing a great job there, and it's a perfect fit for him and what God's already been doing there, and so he's just going to step right into that role. Uh, he's got to finish up his other job, but he'll be stepping into that role fully in May, and he'll be 50-50 tech director and student director. Uh, Josiah's got a baby on the way in May as well. And so we got a lot of moving pieces over the next several months. And I think all the dust will settle sometime in July when we have VBS or, or, or August. August, I think VBS has been moved. We haven't even announced that yet, have we? Our new family pastor already started making decisions and, you know, moving stuff around and all that kind of thing. But we are so grateful for what God has done. And uh, I, I just can't tell you enough about that. So I'm going to let them talk a little bit. And uh, just say a few words. Carrie? Good morning. Um, I just want to say how incredibly blessed I feel um, to be able to um, step into this role. My two passions in life are working with children and serving my Lord and Savior. And now I get to do it all day. And I'm so excited and blessed to do that. And um, just so encouraging. Um, Back in January, I actually felt like God had put it on my heart to apply for a job here. And um, I just asked a couple people to pray for me. I didn't, I, I didn't think that I was equipped for it, but I was really sure that that was where I was being led. And um, so we prayed and we waited and I just, I, I couldn't, I wanted to be obedient, but I could not pull the trigger on it. And this job came and it was like all the pieces just fit together. And I knew, I knew that this is what he had been calling me to do. And so I am so excited uh, to be able to do this. And I'm super encouraged because I just feel God's hand in this so much. And I know that that means that he has really, really great things um, for the future here for our children's ministry. And so, um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to partnering with you guys in ministry and uh, serving our children. So thank you. Uh, I'm going to try not to cry, uh, but that'll be hard after <laughs> Gary's com- uh, comments there, but also because uh, I'm very tired <laughs> from all our flights yesterday. Um, I'm very excited uh, to be stepping into this. Um, like Pastor Ken was talking about, uh, we've, Hannah and I have been looking at the near future, wondering what, what God has. Um, and, and this came up, uh, and much, much like Carrie was saying, it, uh, there, was, there was a ring to it. There was, uh, there was God um, it looks like God was behind it. I was very excited uh, uh, to step into that. Um, I, I love this church because I've, I've grown up here. Uh, I love being a part of this community. I love, I love Jesus, and I love serving him. And those two things together have taught me uh, over the last 10 years uh, to fall in love with the students here too. So I'm really excited to be, to work, to be working alongside them uh, even more than I've already had the chance to. We've got a, a great team here that's going to be uh, working all alongside each other, uh, supporting each other and all that, giving some continuity like we talked about. Uh, God's doing big things, and we serve a really good God, and I'm very glad that I get to be a part of it in this way as well now.
Well, and I'm, I'm stepping into a role, obviously different than I've, I've done, but I'm, I'm so excited, I'll be honest, like, staff chemistry is a huge thing. You know, you don't always have that, and I love these people, the one I'm related to, so it works that way. Um, but, you know, I have a wonderful chemistry with them, and I've been working both, with both of them in student ministry and, and ministry in general for such a long time. And so I'm just excited to be a part of a team that can really uh, steer our families of our church um, toward the Lord and disciple in a deeper, meaningful way. So it's awesome. Very excited. Yeah. I don't know if you realize how blessed we are as a church uh, to have the opportunity for such great talent and people that have a heart for God in our midst already uh, to be able to make these switches. We are, we are so blessed. I didn't even have to use the franchise tag on JD, so that was great. Um, we got him locked up in a long-term contract, We're, you know, and it didn't cost us $50 million, I don't think, so that's good. Um, but God has gone before us, and that's the thing I, I want you to see, is this wasn't my doing or any of their doing, and it, it's just God working in our midst, and it goes back to my first point today, it's just the goodness of God. God is so good, and he's been so good to us as a church, and so I know he's going to go before us and, and continue to do great things uh, with our heart for kids and, and families and students, and Continue to pray for them. Lift them up in prayer daily. Uh, I hope you pray for all of our staff and our elders here. Uh, we need your prayers. We covet your prayers as uh, we minister together. And uh, let's just trust God for even greater things. Let me invite you to stand today. And uh, would you just kind of reach your hands out and, uh, and pray with me uh, over these three as we, we expect great things. Father, what a wonderful opportunity you have brought about uh, in this situation uh, to allow us to reallocate some staff situations and thank you for bringing Carrie on board and working this all out. God, we just thank you for each one of them and we, we pray that you would give them all that they need to do what they need to do to serve you and this church. And uh, we love you, God. We thank you for what you're doing in our midst. We continue to look to you and surrender to you and all your goodness. And God's people together said, amen. All right, I'm going to dismiss these three so they get a head start. They're going to be out in the commons, and so you can hit them with the hard questions today, uh, you know, like where do you find family pastor in the Bible, you know, stuff like that. Um, but ask them those hard questions. What's your philosophy of student ministry, JD, you know, things like that. But congratulate them on the way out today, and uh, may you just have a great day. I'm going to leave you with this blessing. May it be well with your soul. God bless. Have a great day, everybody.